to something earlier here, earlier on in your booklet. This was just looking at kind of visualizing what the chain rule means here. If you look at the graph of sine, you say its derivative is cosine. We did that visually when we first started. We haven't looked visu visually at why the, the derivative of this is what it is. It's just that we, when we originally looked at this, we looked at the slopes, right? If you look back at here when you had to draw the graph of sine and look at what its derivative is, it was way back here somewhere. Oh, it was actually in trig derivatives. That's why I can't find it. Mm -hmm. It was in the previous section. Trig derivatives right at the beginning. And if you look at those graphs we drew. Okay, you, you drew the graph of sine. And then you looked at what the slope was at any given point. So the slope here was 0. So you said, well, the derivative of 0 at that point. The slope here was 1. The slope here was negative 1, and so on. So we just visually looked at what the graph of the derivative of sine looked like, and we came up with its cosine. That wasn't a proof, by the way, that that was what it was. It was just kind of looking uh, at the values as they change. Now you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to look at why the derivative of this is what it is. So maybe it would be better if we actually did this. This is what I was doing before. This is uh, sine x. The derivative is the slope of that. So as we move this along here, it's, this point is going to trace out what the graph looks like, right? As you move this along here, it traces out the graph of um, cosine, right? Slope's 1, slope is 0, slope is negative 1, and so on, right? So that's tracing that out, missing a few points along the way. But anyways, if we now change it to, if we change this function to sine of 2x, think about how it's going to be different. First of all, look at how the function in black there is going to change. Okay, um, if I, come on, doesn't like that. Um, think about how the graph of sine of 2x, how is the graph of sine of 2x different? You put a 2 inside, you replace x with 2x, it changes it. It compresses it horizontally, right? So now you have something that's compressed horizontally. Already maybe you can see why the graph is going to be different. Remember that the graph of the other thing was cos x. Graph, a derivative of sine x is cos x. Think about here, when you compress this, what happens to the slopes of the curve along the way here? It's steeper, right? Okay, It's steeper. When you put a number in there, Actually, we should do this perhaps instead. This might be getting too crazy here, but let's put a number inside there. I suppose the computer wants me to call it D. This may or may not work. Be prepared to have it not work. Instead of putting a 2 in there, we are going to put a, a D in there so we can change it. D times X, okay? It doesn't like it. Redefinition failed. Well, that's kind of dumb. Oh well. Anyways, you can uh, you can see it with the two in there. As I move this thing now, okay. As I move this, it's already. You see that it's higher, right? This turns into uh, the amplitude gets bigger because the slopes are are bigger. When you put a number inside there like that, it it compresses it horizontally and makes everything steeper. All the lines become steeper so that the graph of the derivative is, is higher like that. Now this is just one example of the chain rule when the inside function is just a, a constant times x. But it shows you why it changes like that. Okay, When you have a function inside of another function, it, it, it's you know some kind of a compression when it's a constant like that, but it changes it that this thing is now twice the amplitude. Okay, it's not just, and it's also, you know, it's also a, a cosine curve, but it's got twice the amplitude there. That's co that's two cos two x. All right, because it's twice as high, and it's twice as compressed as a regular cosine curve. All right, so make sure you kind of understand that I suppose before draw a quick sketch for yourself there
if you were to draw this, right, or if you, when we did this before, hopefully by now you're good at calculating derivatives using the chain rule. This is first you just ignore what's inside. You look at it like this. It's sine of something means it's cosine of that something. So if this is 2x, then this is 2x. But now we know from the chain rule that the, the inside affects it as well. The fact that the inside is compressed, right, that's compressing it inside there, means you've got to multiply this by 2. Or in other words, the derivative is 2 cos 2x, not just cos 2x. When you change this inside from x to 2x, it compresses it horizontally and makes the line steeper. Okay? That is just a visual, not a proof, just a visual way to see what's happening there. The, the inside function makes a change to the original graph and it changes the slopes of those lines. All right? Anyways, uh, let's skip ahead here now to looking at this. Number 10. Number 10. We're going to stop here. Actually, this makes sense to stop here and uh, start another one. It doesn't matter if there's a whole bunch of parts.